Hello and welcome back to the Karma Stories Podcast. I'm Rob and I hope you are having a wonderful day today. Today I have five stories for you from the Malicious Compliance subreddit. The Karma Stories Podcast is published to all major podcasting platforms and you can also read along on YouTube under our at Karma Stories Podcast handle. Alright, on to the stories, let's jump right in. This story comes to us from Fire the Torpedo 2011 Fine, I won't help you out then. I used to work permanent nights. On nights, we often had sickness at the last minute that no one was willing to come in and cover. So, we used to help out one another. We didn't do it for praise or additional money, there wasn't any. We did it because we were colleagues for years, and there was no one else. Inevitably, our work was taken for granted. The managers never thanked us for helping them out of their crap, but they also started to assume that we would cover everything. So they made less and less effort to arrange cover for absence, even planned absence they knew about in advance. One night before work, I came into work and received a crappy email complaining about staff in our department using the computers of another department. Now, we had our own computers. The only time my department ever used the other department's computers was when we were covering their absence. The email chain showed the other department complaining about us to my manager, who sent out an email to all the night staff in my department saying, from now on, do not use the other department's computers. I was fuming, because as I said, we only did it to help out, and to stop the other department having to cover night staff at short notice. But I thought, fine, that's how it is. The very next night, the other department is short-staffed again. The supervisor on that shift asks me to cover their department. I say no, I can't. I've been told not to use their computers by my manager. Their supervisor says, oh, no, that's okay, you can use them. I say, no, I can't. My manager told me not to under any circumstances. So she gets her manager to call me, the same manager who complained about us, and say, for this one shift, you can use our computers, as if she is doing me the favor. So I say, no, I really can't. You are not my manager. I cannot defy my manager's instructions. Because they can't get my manager on the line that late at night, another supervisor had to come in last minute and cover the shift. Jumping down to the comment section on this one, we have one from a user called 123Kong123. It says, Oh, that is a perfect malicious compliance, along with F around and find out. OP responded and said, I'll be honest, I have had this story for nearly a year, but was afraid to post it because a lot of stories on here end up with people criticizing the OP and telling them that their story isn't malicious compliance. Another commenter down below called Padawan6 said, I love this. Did the other manager ever acknowledge their attitude issues, or did they double down or anything? OP responded to this one and said, They actually got my manager's manager's manager, who was the manager of the manager from the other department. I know, right? So many managers. To call me the next day. He seemed bewildered by the whole thing, and told me I was fine to help them. He knew I'd been doing it for years. It immediately became obvious that he had not been told the whole story, and had been told that, basically, I was being awkward for no reason. I explained to him that I had no problem helping anyone, but that they were the ones being rude and ungrateful, and it had come back to bite them in the butt. To be honest, I had a new job by then and was waiting for a start date. If this wasn't the case, I probably would have caved and just covered the shift, but I knew I was leaving and I wanted to show them one of the reasons why. I worked there for 11 years and put up with so much stupidity from all these effing managers for so many years. Sad to put so many years into a job and leave it so miserable though. This shows why a good boss should always listen to both sides of a problem. If one worker complains about another worker, it's important to ask the second worker why they're doing what they're doing before deciding what to do. Otherwise, you might accidentally mess up something important that you didn't know about. This story comes to us from Crazy Gay for Hire. Piercings not allowed. I, 35 male, used to work at a hardware store that rhymes with blows. About 10 years ago, 
I was a sales associate out on the floor. One day, I decided to get my industrials pierced because as I knew the policy, I noted the front end and a few managers had piercings that did not fit the policy, so I thought it was a bit lax. After I got the piercings, I got wrote up for not following policy. So I researched the policy and purchased a blows beanie so I could meet all dress codes while covering them up. I still got wrote up and I started disputing with HR about it because they were covered and I was following policy, even though they were ignoring policy on the front end and allowing them to have face piercings. After a few weeks of fighting it, it ended up going to HR outside of the store. District HR calls me in for a meeting with a few store managers and the local HR. HR and managers inform me that even though they are covered, Blow still has a no piercing above a certain amount, location, or size policy, even though they can't see them, and I need to get rid of them because they say it's a safety hazard. In comes my compliance questions. I ask how they know I'm wearing and breaking policy if they cannot see them. They say they have the right to ask me to take off the beanie if they think I have them in, and that they notice them in my ears when I'm walking into my shift. I repeat with a slightly different question. So does that mean you're going to make me whip my pecker out every shift to make sure I don't have my pecker piercing in? Are you going to make everyone take off shirts to verify no one's wearing nipple piercings? HR started backtracking really fast. I really don't have a pecker piercing or nipple piercing, but they didn't know that. After questioning the policy and arguing, they couldn't enforce what they couldn't see without harassing people to fit their policy. HR ended up dropping all write-ups, and two weeks later, Blows changed the piercing policy to allow more piercing options and dyed hair. I like to think I helped with that policy change. Jumping down to the comment section on this one, there's one from a user called Hey Nani Nani Anonymous. It says, what was their response when you pointed out all the other people with forbidden piercings? OP responded and said, They told me they didn't notice them on others and would start looking into it more. Yet when they did confront one of the others during the situation, it was always a verbal warning only. Another commenter down below called Apprehensive Yak 2598 said, I so wish I could have seen their faces when you asked them about pecker piercings. OP responded and said, it was a lot of jaws dropped and wide eyes. I don't think I'll ever forget the looks, haha. <laughs> Alright, I'm assuming some of you out there have no idea what an industrial piercing is, cause I didn't and I had to look it up. So, Wikipedia says, An industrial piercing is any ear piercing that consists of two pierced holes connected with a single piece of jewelry. These piercings typically consist of a double perforation of the upper ear cartilage specifically. I guess we learn something new every day. I don't know, I think banning tattoos and piercing nowadays is pretty silly. I've got tattoos myself, but they are covered up, but I can understand the appeal of them to some people. When you go into a place now and you see that an employee is tattooed or pierced, you feel like the place is more open and accepting of people. This story comes to us from Pimmel Pimmel. Manager threatens to write me up with a salary deduction if I won't give a doctor's note for asking my excess hours just because I am sick. So I, 30 female, have been working with this company for three years already. I work retail and our managers are always micromanaging and will write us up each time we even just breathe. Just kidding. But you can tell that's how they are up our nose all the time. Especially, I was once written up for eating during my lunch break in our shop. That's for another story. Now, on to the original story, my days off are scheduled every Thursday, and I was already feeling ill days before my day off. I had waited until my day off to rest, and hoped I could feel better. But when the end of my day off comes, I still feel sick, so I inform my boss if I can use my excess hours and not come to work the next day, since I am so sick. Just for context, our company never pays for our overtime, but expects us to work 12 hours of every day, and per day, they will give us 2 hours excess. And since I never requested until that particular day, I had racked up 120 excess hours overtime, which can be used for days off, etc. I had only requested a 1 day extra off, which would amount to 10 hours to be deducted from my long extra hours accumulated. 
but my boss threatens to write me up if I don't provide a doctor's note, and she informed me that even if I will provide one, she won't deduct it to my hours. So I comply and went to the doctor and take a medical note and was given a three-day recommended rest and sent it to my manager. Now she has no choice but to let me have an additional three more days, paid sick leave, and I won't be back to the shop until Monday, instead of just giving me a day to rest. Now Saturday comes and the shop has a lot of issues without me and my reliever is having a hard time coping for my work. So my manager calls me and I didn't respond to any of her messages nor calls and just rested well. Monday came and I reported the company to labor claims and the company was forced to pay me that 120 hours overtime. Checkmate. Jumping down to the comment section on this one, we have one from a user called Kempeth. It says, First day doctor's notes are such a stupid policy if you prioritize having people in the workplace. No doc will write you sick for just one day unless it's something absolutely minor. Flu is an automatic week off because that's how long you're infectious and because the doc gives zero Fs about any manager shift plan. I'm not sure what country OP is in, but there were a lot of labor laws broken during this story. So number one, OP is being forced to work 12 hours a day, but only getting paid for 10 and then getting the other two days as an excess. Um, what? A lot of places also have laws on how many hours are between your shifts. You have to have adequate rest time to come back in and work again. And then there's retaliation. They were threatening to write you up for requesting a legitimate sick day. That could be considered retaliation, which is prohibited under many labor statutes. Just a friendly reminder on this one to make sure you know your local and national labor laws because they can stop you from getting screwed. This story comes to us from Unhappy Wolf 8611 Landlord doesn't want me to use AC in Phoenix. I rent a room in suburban Phoenix. The landlord lives with me. We've been getting highs of 110 and lows of 90. I work in the evenings at a factory while my landlord works during the day. I've been setting the AC at a comfortable temperature of 85 during the day, but my landlord stopped me from doing so. He said that using the AC at 110 costs too much and damages the AC unit. I told him I'm happy to pay extra, but he wouldn't budge. What's more is that my landlord himself turns on the AC when he arrives home and sets it to 70. He says that since it's only 90 outside, it doesn't cost much or damage the unit. Now, I grew up in Sudan without an AC. I know a lot of survival tricks, but these are best suited for stone houses, not furnished and carpeted ones. However, I care more about my landlord's wishes than his house. Here's what I do. I walk around with a wet towel draped on my neck. The water gets into the carpet and might eventually cause odors, but I must abide by my landlord. During daytime, I sleep by wetting my t-shirt. The water gets into the mattress and might eventually ruin it, but I must abide by my landlord. I open the windows and hang a wet mesh to let a cool breeze in. It might damage the windowsill and attract some bugs, but hey, the company is nice. I also take long, cold showers throughout the day. The cherry on top is that I got this room off Craigslist and didn't sign a lease. It's all cash and the landlord only has a bond of $100, which he'd probably never give back even if I left the house in an immaculate condition. I think I'm going to just bail if he ever catches on. Building on my comments of the last story where I said that you should know what your labor laws are, you should also know what your landlord tenant rights are as well. Specifically in Phoenix where OP is, landlords are not allowed by law to deny the use of AC or a heater. Phoenix's cooling ordinance sets a minimum temperature for cooling and ventilation in rental units. Rental units need to safely cool all habitable rooms to a temperature of no greater than 86 degrees if cooled by evaporative cooling, and no greater than 82 degrees if cooled by air conditioning. So OP, continue to put that AC at the temperature that you want it to be, because if the landlord tries to kick you out, they'll have to go through the formal eviction process, and then you can sue them for the denial of AC use.
This story comes to us from Erovos. Rewrite the whole essay? In my sophomore year of high school, our English class had to write an essay about a book. Can't remember which book, but it doesn't matter. Well, when our essays were handed back, no one had gotten a good grade on it. The teacher told us that we had to revise our essays based on the corrections we were given and then turn them in again. She wanted three copies, the original, the revised one with the corrections we made highlighted, and a final copy without the highlights. I look at mine and compare it to everyone else's essay. Everyone else has the teacher's comments written in red, things underlined, stuff crossed out. Mine just has my grade, it was a D. So I talk to my teacher after class and ask her what I needed to fix since my essay had none of her comments. Her response was that I had to rewrite my essay. Again, I ask what do I need to change to get a better grade. She tells me that it wasn't good and I needed to rewrite the entire essay. Cue my malicious compliance. I rewrote my entire essay, word for word, twice. One for the highlighted copy and one for the final draft. I highlighted random words and sentences on the highlighted copy, but again, it was the same as the one that was given a D. A week later, we get our grades back and mine had improved to a B. The annoying part was that I couldn't even call her out on it because my school has a plagiarism policy where you can't submit the same assignment twice because that would be cheating. Side note, this teacher also wrote on a different book essay of mine, did you even read the book? When I had gotten yelled at for reading that same book in her class instead of listening to her teach. Jumping down to the comment section on this one, we have one from a user called Particular Car 8520 It says, you should have highlighted the whole essay from beginning to end. You should call her out on it. Plagiarism is a BS reason and you could have argued against the school too. Yeah, I'm thinking that this teacher didn't even read it. In fact, I don't think this teacher read it either time that it was submitted. I'm pretty sure they just have it out for OP for some reason, and OP found a way to get around it. If you enjoy daily Reddit stories, I encourage you to follow and add us to the favorites on whichever podcasting platform you enjoy the most. Also, if you're watching and listening on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button and drop a like on the video. It really helps us out. I thank you for watching and listening. I hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you tomorrow.